So uh, when we were thinking about the ideas for this talk, we were kind of looking at customers who are trying to isolate things within, within their cluster. And so a typical scenario is you have some sort of trusted workload and some sort of untrusted workload. The examples we use on the talk are a payment system is the trusted side and a company that is doing sort of web hosting has a container that's provided by a customer and that, that's basically untrusted code from a security perspective. And so people want to like separate these things out. Uh, so you could use a cluster boundary, but a lot of people are actually looking at uh, kind of putting the, the trusted thing on trusted nodes and the untrusted thing on untrusted nodes. So using a, a VM and a node effectively to separate those, those two kinds of workloads. And that is a pretty comfortable place for security people. They uh, are used to separating things with VMs. But in Kubernetes, it's actually a little bit different. There's actually quite a lot of connections uh, between nodes and a lot of privilege that's held by nodes that makes that isolation just probably not as good as a lot of people think it is. And so we really wanted to highlight that in this talk and give a practical demonstration of kind of how to break that isolation and sort of talk about some alternatives. So Tim, do you want to talk about uh, kind of like node versus pod and what the alternatives are there? Yeah, sure. So uh, the node is really complicated. There's a lot of stuff going on. And the attacker, or an attacker who has compromised the node, has access to the union of all of those different things that the node is using. Uh, they have a pretty large toolkit, even if you're running least privileged. Um, and so we kind of compare what the attacker has access to in the node with what they have access to in the pod, which it, you can scope down much more. And this slide kind of summarizes the differences there. And then we wrap up by looking at what you can actually do to defend in addition to or instead of node isolation. Before the attacker can get to actually leveraging all of those privileges at the node level, they first have to go through your application getting remote code execution. They then need to uh, break out of the container, um, and only then can they get access to the whole node. So first we recommend hardening the application, then we look at different ways of hardening the container, um, and we talk about sandboxes, like GKE sandboxes and G with GVisor, as a way of hardening that pod boundary a lot more. Um, and then we see that at that point, uh, node isolation isn't as critical. Uh, so we finish off by talking about how uh, nodes are really complicated and shouldn't be your only measure of defense. Um, and instead we recommend using container isolation and pod sandboxing uh, as a much more secure form of isolation. So I hope you enjoyed the talk and uh, we'll be hanging out at the Google booth so please come by and talk to us if you want to talk about uh, security and GKE and isolation or anything else. Thanks. <laughs>